Hi everybody, um, in today's video I'm going to show you some nail clipping um, on a dog that doesn't particularly like it. So um, this is Neo and he's had his nails done regularly but he's still not a fan of it. Uh, he knows we have to do it so we're going to do it today and I normally do them about every couple of weeks if I want to keep them short but at least once a month they really need doing. Um, on him I can take them quite short um, and um, I'll, hopefully you'll be able to see. So just before we start I have got here an ordinary nail clippers. Um, some are better than others but really there's no specific ones so you can just get something like this. He's already trying to get away from them, uh, which is why I have him hooked up here. Otherwise I would be chasing him around the house. Um, and then I've also got the file, um, which is a Dremel Mini Micro, I think. Dremel Micro. This is not specifically for dog nails. Um, it's a kind of a household tool, if you like, and you can change these um, bits here and get loads of them, um, extra ones and really rough ones. I like a really rough one so that I can file them down, file them down quickly. And first I'll take the tip off with the clippers and then I will file. Um, some dogs may not like the file and mine don't because it does take a little bit longer than just to quickly clip off the nail. Um, but I like to do both just to make them really nice and short and smooth edges. Um, and most important really thing, if you've got a dog that doesn't like his nails done, is to restrain them. So hook him up somewhere along a flat surface so that he can't swing around. And uh, this is the way I learned to do big dogs that struggle and I'm not physically strong enough to hold them um, like Great Danes and um, he's quite strong as well. So. This really just helps me um, so that I don't have to walk around the room and chase around the room with him. So he's hooked up here. Now, when we start cutting, I'm not sure how much I'll be able to zoom in, but if you imagine that that's your kind of a nail and he slightly turns downwards like that, um, where you want to clip is on the bottom edge, you will see like a sharp vent um, in a nail. So really at that point you can safely clip off. So that's your kind of nail. And with your clippers, rather than facing them um, that way uh, towards the foot, I tend to face my clippers out a little bit um, to make sure I don't cut them to a bleeding point. So I point them slightly out that way rather than inwards. Um, there are people who Cut, you can cut nails all different ways. This is just how I do it. Um, and I've always managed to do big dogs, strong ones, difficult ones. Now, if your dog would get to a point of biting you uh, and you want to persevere with cutting the nails, which I would do, because um, uh, many of them do actually really need it, um, I would always muzzle the dog and I really strongly advise you uh, to muzzle them and it actually helps you teach them to get used to or at least allow you to cut their nails uh, without kicking up much fuss. So when I had to work on uh, big dogs that could possibly bite me, uh, I would still restrain them like that and I would pop a muzzle in just in case. And the reason for the muzzle is that if you're going to cut and the dog's going to bite at your hand or your face is quite close as well and we don't want that. Um, if your dog wasn't muzzled and it goes for your hand or your face, you automatically let go and you back away. Now, at that point, instantly your dog learned that if I bite again, you will go away and leave me alone and they will just never let you do it again. And that's why I put a muzzle on the dogs because if I've got his foot and he tries to he doesn't, um, but a dog tries to bite your hand, you, you will just hold and let them. Obviously, they cannot hurt you with the muzzle, and that's very important that you do not let go. And um, that's what I would do. 
and once they realise that you're not letting them go and the vomiting is not working and you're not backing away, they will pack it in. And eventually I've got drugs where I had to muzzle them for the first one or two clips um, and now I don't have to muzzle them. So um, they just realise that biting is just no point uh, and they stop even trying. So that made it a lot easier and obviously everybody's safe and you're able to stay calm and not lose your um, temper with the dog um, and uh, just get on with the cutting. So really muzzle helps if you have got a very, very difficult dog. Um, and they mostly, from my experience, I'm a dog walker and I cut it so many nails in my lifetime, I can't even count it. Um, most of the dogs just want to get away from you. Um, and they just really fidget and pull their feet away. And um, that's why the restraint. And I will try to show you in the bigger dog how I do it so that I've got a good hold of the dog. And sometimes that's what they struggle with most, that you actually holding them and restraining them. And that's what they don't like. Uh, and they'll fight you on that. So, and he's gonna try to do a little bit of it. Um, and um, when they do try to struggle and you've got the clippers near and they're trying to pull away, then you just don't clip while they're fighting. You just hold until they stop. Um, and then we'll try to clip again. So um, first clipping might take a while, um, and then, but then you slowly get the hang of it. Um, so we're gonna start. And I always have the same system in cutting the nails. Um, I always start at the back feet because they always seem to be easier and I leave the front right last. Uh, for some reason that seems to be always the difficult leg on most of the dogs. Um, I don't know why. So we, we are going to start with the back one um, and I also, the way I cut each nail, so let's say the dog's got four nails, uh, I always start at one end and make my way towards the rest of them because I don't just clip that one and then that one and then I'll go to that one because you can lose track which ones you've done and not done and you can just go back in and clip again and suddenly they bleed in and um, that's not the end of the world um, but ideally is to avoid them getting to a bleeding point so that they're more likely to get used to it and let you do it so I'm just gonna have to and um, we're gonna make a start now come on here up I always have them standing and I'm going to make him go all the way forward to the end of his line there that he's tied up in because he's going, he won't be able to go, go on flat stump. Now if he reaches all the way end of his lead, which is this is as far forward he can go. Now I'm standing behind him, hang on, stay there. Um, he's not that bad, but normally the dog will try to get away from you. So he can't go forward. He can't go backwards because I'm right here. And he can't get past me. And because he's got this wall of units here, he can't swing around sideways either. So I'm really limiting the ways he can, um, all right, stomp, stop it. Uh, which way he can move away so that I can get a grip of his foot. Um, and we're going to start, so you've got hairy feet on the sectors. Um, let's see if we can zoom in a bit. No, I'm not sure how. So we'll just put it closer, stay there. And start by trying to hold their foot until they let you hold the foot. And this is, you can practice this, because uh, some dogs don't like their feet touched. So you can practice this when they're coupling up with you on, on a sofa, rather than just stroking them anywhere, try to play with their feet. It will also help you when you trim in the feet and they should let you just do whatever you like with his foot. He's quite good with his back one, so he's not really pulling this one away. And um, you, you will move all your hair, you can grip your hair out the way and we're just gonna go clip in and I'm just gonna take the tips off him. Um, he's quite good with the back feet. Front ones he's gonna, hang on, good boy. And another way is if they're pushing down that I would put his leg on my knee like this. So he can't push downwards either. Or you put your hand in 
that way and I can get hold of his leg. Um, now I've clipped the four nails on this foot so I'm just going to file them quick. Leave it. Ah, ah. Now you see he, he's not really keen on this but he can't go forward, he can't go backwards and he can't spin around and fling his butt out sideways either. So I'm just going to go quickly file. Uh -uh. Hey. Yes, hey. Good boy. Uh -uh. And as you can see, if he starts fidgeting too much, I pause and wait till he stops. Now, another good thing about this Dremel is that it has got a light at the tip. So if you haven't got good daylight, you can see exactly what you're doing. And also, if the drill head gets caught in the long hair, it will automatically stop. So I'm not going to catch his long hair and pull it all out. <clears throat> uh -uh. Stay. Neo. Right, this way's better. Stay, stay. Right, and that's one foot done. You can't really see much. Uh, now I will do the other back leg. Um, so we'll turn him around the other way. Come on, Neo. Good boy. So now he goes to the end of the line there, so he can't go any more forward. We'll stand him up. Up, Neo, up, 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 Neo, up. Good boy. No, 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 I want that side puppet. Come on. Come on, it's not that bad. Trust me, it's not that bad, good boy. Right, here we go. So I'll pick up now this back foot. Again, I will cut a uh, clip first. Uh, there we go. Uh, you, I'm sorry you can't see very much. Good boy, and now we go find him. to the front, we'll do his left one first, and uh, I have to readjust that. Now he's a lot worse with his front feet, and he said this down, he's now four years old, since four months old, I've been trimming his nails regularly, and as you can see, he still really fights me on it, so, but he knows we have to do it. Sometimes the dog can start screaming and whinging and whining, um, but uh, if you're not hurting them, and I'm not hurting him, so I'll just tell him to stop it and uh, take no notice of it. Uh, and when he's gonna start fidgeting with his foot too much, I will just hold, pause, and go back to clipping. Um, now here, uh, he's going to go to the end of his chain because he's gonna now, because I'm not behind him, he's gonna try to back away um, but that's going to stop him. So I'm going to let him back away until he hits the end of his chain. Um, and again, as you can see, he can't uh, swing out. Um, and don't forget uh, the dew claws. Most of the setters that I've seen, they always have their dew claws. So uh, don't forget to trim that one because they can curl straight into the leg. Ah, ah, stay. Stay. Good boy. Right, he's not being too bad. And now we go filing. This one's a bit tricky to file. 
is a full lot of hair there. See, now he's going backwards, so I'm going to let him back away. And now just my drill stopped because I've caught some of his long hair. So we're going to let him get, he's now at the end of the chain, so there's no more backing out. He can't go backwards. He is not going to try to go forward and he can't swing out sideways because he's got a cooker there or a wall or wherever you decide to do it. And I'm standing the other side of him so he can't swing out this way. Um, so really this is, uh, uh, all right, lay down then. He can lay down if he wants to. No, you can't. Now, they're gonna, he's going to try to really pull his leg underneath him. And there's his elbow there. So I'm just going to put my leg, uh, my foot or my leg, if he was standing, behind his elbow because he's going to try to do this uh, with his front leg. So I'm just going to stop him at the elbow there, between elbow and shoulder. So he can't pull his foot back. And we're just going to file. Good boy. One last leg to do, good boy. And he's got a yummy treat waiting there, which is butter, and that's his favorite. Um, you can reward your dogs after each nail if you're teaching them. Uh, and I've started that way, but now he knows better. So he's just gonna get uh, a treat once we've done everything. Now I need to swap him around the other way, good boy. There we go, can you turn around? No, this way, son, yeah. And what you turn the camera? <laughs> yeah, were you licking your chops yet? You're not getting your treat just yet. We've got one more left to do. Right. So I'm gonna just grab his foot and wait which way he's going to. He should he's gonna try to go backwards. And if we can do it standing, you'll see. Um see he's going backwards already, and he can only go so far back. Um and I'm gonna put my knee or my leg behind his elbow there because he's gonna to try to move his leg backwards. Um, there's Duclo. Good boy, good boy. And when he's standing still, I do praise him. So he's been surprisingly very good today, actually. Normally he's far worse than this. Good boy. Good boy. Now we just fire quickly. I know this is not your favourite bit. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Boy, <laughs> and he's gonna get lots of praise now. 
He's telling his girl he's mad. Good boy. There you go. There's your butter boy. Good boy. Yes, good boy. There you go, sweetie. There you go. So, as you can see, he's really not that traumatised. You can't see, but his tail is nice and wagging and he doesn't hate me uh, for this. So, he gets his butter now and his th nails are done. So, I really wish he wasn't such a drama queen, but here we go. I've done it. So, uh, just have a go and try.